everyone. So today I had the request around whether there's a way in Intex Workflow to figure out what type of document you have. Now, of course, you can deal with uh, content types, but in this case, we don't know what kind of document that's potentially being uploaded. Uh, the only way we can figure it out is from the file extension. So what I'm going to do is actually build a UDA or user-defined action in text Workflow. This one is in Intex Workflow 2013. Now you guys can see my screen here. This is a very simple user-defined action. Basically, I'm gonna open up the parameters and you'll see I have two parameters, one being an input, which is the file URL. So usually this type of UDA will run on a uh, from a workflow or document library. So you'll have that URL. Uh, and the output's going to be an extension, which is going to be the you know, potentially three or four letters uh, of the file extension. And uh, I'll show you something else that I'm actually doing with that. Okay, now you'll see I have the regular expression action. Let's open this up and show you exactly what I'm doing. The slash W basically says we want uh, a character or a word, uh, and the plus means uh, one or more of those. And the dollar sign tells you that we want to look from the end or the back of the text string. So in this case, the file URL. Now this is not going to match a dot or a period, which basically means we're going to just get the file extension. There's the input text, which is our file URL parameter. And the thing with the extract is that it only stores the data into a collection variable. So I did have to create a new text workflow collection variable so I can store that data in there. So that's a pretty simple regular expression. The next thing I'm doing, and I usually do this with every sort of regular expression uh, that I do, or anything that fills a collection variable, I wanna make sure that there's actually something in there before I start trying to pull stuff out of it. So in this case, we're using the collection operation action. And this is going to uh, do a count on that collection to get that data back. So let's try to open this up again. This is access accessing a VM on another machine, so it's being a little bit slow. There we go, there's my collection. We're doing a count and we're storing in a number variable called numCount. Pretty straightforward. Now, the next thing is, we want to pull the extension out of the collection, but we want to make sure that we actually do have something in there. So that's why we checked the count. So we actually get that value. Then we do a run if condition, and we're actually making sure that the num count is greater than zero. So there's at least one value in that collection. Okay, and the last two actions are here. Because we know we at least have one value in that collection variable, we're going to access it again. This time we're going to do a get. We're going to get the first value, right? Num first index is just a number variable that has a default value of zero. And we're gonna store the result in our output parameter called extension. Now the final thing I wanted to do is there's the potential of you getting, uh, let's say a document that is a docx extension, and it could be docx or lowercase, it could be docx with a capital D or a capital D and a capital X, you know, people do all sorts of stuff. So I wanna make sure that when I get the data back and I get that extension back, that it is, I guess you say normalized. So I want it to all be in lowercase. So in that case, we're gonna use this build string action, and we're gonna use an inline function called fn to lower. We're gonna insert that extension and we're gonna store it back in the extension. So we will always get a uh, a parameter or a variable back that's going to be the lower case of that extension. So if I jump into uh, this section here, this is uh, another tab I have, and I have a workflow running on here. Let's pop this open. Oops. Now this has a full URL that I just hard coded into the actual uh, UDA. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's being a little bit slow. Oh, here we go. All right, let's try now to get into the workflow designer. There we go. All right, so there's my get file extension UDA. Let's pop this open. And you can see I have a file URL at the end, I have the name and I have .csv and you notice I put a capital S in there. And for my extension, I start in a text variable called text extension. So it's a .csv, but just with a capital S. And then all I'm doing after that is just logging that extension variable to the workflow history.
So if I jump back out of here, and let's actually go to get file extension. Here's a workflow that I've already run, so I'm not gonna make you guys wait to see this run. And you'll notice that there it has actually logged the extension, which is CSV, and it's all in lowercase. So now I can do something like use a switch action or a set of condition action or something like that to say, a you know, switch action would be really good. You could do, if it's a CSV, I want to do this. If it's a docx, I want to do this. If it's a PDF or a PowerPoint, I want to do this. And then you can actually enable the switch action to have an other branch, which basically means if it's like a catch-all, if this extension is not something that I'm aware of, then maybe I want to notify somebody and say, I have a document that I don't know what it is. So hopefully this is a nice UDA for you guys to reuse. Again, it's really just to show you how you can build a whole bunch of reusable logic into these user-defined actions and then use those in workflows. So hopefully this helps you guys. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions on better ways of doing this, just let me know and uh, and I'll comment, just the comment, add the comments at the bottom of the blog post. Thanks for your time, guys.